Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see today's question. So today's question, we are taking this up from the topic of logarithms. And if I talk about the question which is given to us from this topic, the question tells us that S consists of alpha, which is given by a equation that is log of 9 raised to 2 alpha minus 4 plus 13 to the base 2 minus log of 5 over 2 3 raised to 2 alpha minus 4 plus 1 again to the base 2 is equal to 2. So this is the entire equation given to us and we have been told S is a set which consists of this value of alpha which comes from this equation. And the question is asking you to find out maximum possible value of beta for which the equation which is given to us as x square minus 2 times summation of a or alpha which we are finding from this equation. So summation of alpha where alpha belongs to s that is this set the whole square into x plus summation of alpha again belonging to s alpha plus 1 the whole square beta is equal to 0 has real roots. So we need to find out the maximum possible value of beta in this case for which this entire quadratic equation which is given to us has real roots. And if I talk about the answer choices that we have here the options are A, 25, B, 36, C, 16, and B, it is given to us as 64. So we need to figure out which one of the answer choice is the correct answer for the question given to us. So let's figure out this equation. Let's try to solve it and then we'll find the maximum value of beta from this equation. So if I talk about the question's equation first, that told me I can get my value of S from alpha using this equation. So if I solve for that equation first, let's see how do we solve that. So I can write my equation first that was log of 9 raised to 2 alpha minus 4 plus 13 to the base 2 minus log of 5 over 2 3 raised to 2 alpha minus 4 plus 1 to the base 2 is equal to 2. So we get this equation. Now once I have this, I can write this equation as log A minus log B is equal to log of A over B. Now once I have this formula written with me here, I can write this equation as log of to the base 2 log a minus log b i can just use that idea to write 9 raised to 2 alpha minus 4 plus 13 denominator becomes 5 by 2 3 raised to 2 alpha minus 4 plus 1 is equal to 2 now once i have this i just use the idea of applying the formula that says log a to the base b it is nothing but log a over log b so from there, I can write this equation further as log of 9 raised to 2 alpha minus 4 plus 13 over 5 over 2, 3 raised to 2 alpha minus 4 plus 1 over log 2 is equal to 2. So I'm just using the idea. Now log 2, which is present in the denominator, I can take it on the other side and that gets multiplied with this 2. And your equation now becomes log of 9 raised to 2 alpha minus 4 plus 13 over 5 over 2, 3 raised to 2 alpha minus 4 plus 1 is equal to 2 log 2. Again, applying the idea of logarithms, if I have a log b, I can just take that a as the power of b. So it becomes log b raised to a. So if I just use that idea, my right hand side turns out to become log 2 squared and that makes it log 4. Now if I write my left hand side also, 
you have 9 raised to 2 alpha minus 4 plus 13 over 5 over 2 into 3 raised to 2 alpha minus 4 plus 1. Now, once you have log A equals log B, I can remove logarithm from both sides and I can just write A and B as equal to each other. So if I just remove the log from this equation and write the remaining parts, I have 9 raised to 2 alpha minus 4 plus 13 over, I have 5 over 2, 3 raised to 2 alpha minus 4 plus 1 is equal to 4. Now once I have this and if I try to solve this further, let's see how do we solve this. So I can write 9 as 3 squared. So I can write that as 3 squared. 2 alpha minus 4 plus 13 over 5 over 2, 3 raised to 2 alpha minus 4 plus 1 is equal to 4. So from here, I can try to write 2 alpha minus 4, which I see here is the same power in the numerator as well as denominator. So if I put, let's say, 2 alpha minus 4 is equal to x, so your entire expression becomes 3 raised to 2x plus 13 over 5 over 2 3 raised to x plus 1 is equal to 4. Now once I have this, I can write this 3 raised to 2x as 3 raised to x squared plus 13 over 5 over 2 3 raised to x plus 1 is equal to 4. Right. So from here, I can put 3 raised to x as, let's say, a. So I get a square plus 13 over 5 over 2a plus 1 is equal to 4. So if I solve this further, I get this as a square plus 13 over, this becomes 5a plus 2 into 1, which is 2 divided by 2 is equal to 4. So a square plus 13 multiplied with 2 because this 2 which is present in the denominator of denominator gets multiplied with the numerator and your denominator I keep it as it is. Taking 5a plus 2 on the other side gets multiplied with 4 so you get 2a square plus 13 is 4 into 5a plus 2 that gives you 2a square plus 26 is equal to 20a plus 8. So once you have this entire thing, and if I try to form my quadratic, I get 2a square minus 20a plus 26 and minus 18. So that is plus 18 is equal to 0. Dividing throughout by 2, I get a square minus 10a plus 9 is equal to 0. Now once I solve this further, I can split minus 10 as minus 9 and minus 1. So I get a square minus 9a minus a plus 9 is equal to 0. So if I try to solve this further, I take a common from the first two terms. And from here, nothing is common. So 1 comes out. So a, a minus 9 minus 1, a minus 9 is equal to 0. So from here, I get a minus 1 is equal to 0 or I get a minus 9 is equal to 0. So from here, you get a as 1 or you get a as 9. Once I get the values of a with me, I can just resubstitute it as 3 raised to x. So if I resubstitute, I get 3 raised to x is 1 or 3 raised to x is 9. So I can write this 1 as 3 raised to 0 because anything raised to 0 is always 1. So from here, I get x as 0 or if I write it in this form again, 9 I can write as 3 square. So if I compare it, I get x as 2. Now once I have x as 0 or x as 2 further, the question tells me x is nothing but 2 alpha minus 4. So if I have x as 0, I get 2 alpha minus 4 is 0. So 2 alpha is 4 and alpha from there becomes 2. Or 2 alpha minus 4 in this case was 2. So 2 alpha becomes equal to 4 plus 2 which is 6 and alpha gives us 3. So we get the two values of alpha that is 2 or 3. Now once I have the two values of alpha 
as two or three that are nothing but my values of set s which were asked to me so i get set s consists of two terms one is two other is three and these are the values of alpha that we have now once i have these values i want to put that in my quadratic equation given for that i need summation of alpha to square it and i also need summation of alpha plus one squared already so let's find that first so summation of alpha i know my set s consists of value of alpha which are two or three so summation of alpha for all the values of alpha that belong to set s it is two plus three which is five and summation of alpha again belonging to s for alpha plus one the whole square that basically becomes two plus one the whole square plus three plus one that gives you 3 square 9, 4 square 16. And that basically makes it 25. So I have my quadratic equation now in the form. So if I write that, it is x square minus 2. So x square minus 2. Summation of alpha was given to us. So summation of alpha is nothing but 5. That is squared x plus it said the last term said summation of alpha belong to s alpha plus 1 the whole square which we got as 25 and beta equals 0. So you get 25 beta is equal to 0. So you have your quadratic equation now. 2 into 5 square. So 5 square is already 25. 25 into 2 is 50. So your quadratic equation turns out x square minus 50x plus 25 beta is equal to zero and we have been given that this entire thing has real roots now when we have been told that it has this equation has real roots and we need to find the maximum value of beta so first let's solve for real roots we know for the real roots you should have the value of discriminant b square minus 4ac turning out to become greater than zero or equal so if I make it greater than or equal to 0, B in this case is minus 50. So minus 50 the whole square. Minus 4, A is 1, C is 25 beta. Greater than or equal to 0. From here you get 50 into 50 because negative squared is already positive. So I'm just writing 50 into 50. And taking this entire term on the right hand side, I get 4 into 25 beta. Dividing throughout by 4 into 25, both sides. So you get this cancelled. This entirely gets cancelled. You also get two ones, two twos, two ones, two twenty fives. So you get 25 is greater than or equal to beta or you get beta is less than or equal to 25. This is the condition which we get for the real roots. But the question is asking us to find the maximum value of beta I can have. And from this condition, I can see that beta is less than 25 or equal to 25. So the maximum value of beta I can get for this question is 25. And if you see that matches here with which question? So it matches with option A. So A becomes the correct answer for the question given to us here. I hope you have understood how to solve this type of questions which deals with the ideas of using the expressions of logarithms, using the formulas of logarithms and also using the ideas of quadratic equations. So we just figured out and used three formulas for logarithms first, log a minus log b, log a to the base b and the third one was a log b is log b to power a. After that, we got our equation. We just substituted 2 alpha minus 4 as x. And then we also substituted 3 raised to x as a. So our quadratic equation turned out in terms of a. And once I solved that values of a, I got the values of a as 1 or 9. Again, resubstituting, I got x as 0 or 2. And again, resubstituting, I got alpha as 2 or 3. That becomes my value of the set s. And once I had that, I just found out summation of alpha and summation of alpha plus 1 the whole square. So I got both of the ideas. I put that in the quadratic equation given. 
and I used the idea of real roots that the discriminant should be greater than or equal to zero. That gave me the values of beta toning out to become less than or equal to 25. And that gives you the maximum value of beta is 25, which matches with option A. So A becomes the correct answer for the question. I'll see you again tomorrow with some other question from some other topic. And we are going to continue our series of questions on JWE mains. So stay tuned for more videos to roll out. Also, if you're enjoying these videos that we are doing every day, please do like the videos as well and do subscribe to my channel. Do share these videos with your friends also who are involved in the preparation of these questions on JWE. So they can also take the benefit from these questions which we are solving on everyday basis. See you again tomorrow with one other video. Thank you.